Instagram. So it's what did you do? What did you do? What did you learn? What worked? And what could you could have been done better? Yeah. Okay. We're rolling, Linda. Here we are. Are we? We're live. We're live. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go on then. What did you do? What did, what did you, you do? do? Jesus Christ, what did you, <laughs> what have you done? What have you done? Yeah, fuck, what have I done? Right, um, I I did loads of memoirs, right, with Torino. Mm-hmm. I'll look at you, Kirsty. I did loads of memoirs with Torino, mm-hmm. and I actually... Does it look weird if I look at Kirsty? No, it's great. Okay, right, I did loads of memoirs, and then I actually dug up Torino. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Kirsty's going to go I know, I know. We best not fucking talk to her. That that okay said it all. Okay, well, you're alive now. Yeah. <laughs> right, Kirsty's no, out of it from yeah. this minute. <laughs> okay, so I'm a trained professional. Right, yeah. Somebody, what did you do? Let's go from the top. Right, I did some memoirs. I did loads of memoirs. I begged people for memoirs. Right, I can't even look at Kirsty after that. Okay, (laughs) (laughs) and and then I actually dug up the Reno. Okay, you've really shortened that there. Yeah. How long did that take? That process. Fucking hell, man! Or I don't know anything. You don't know. (laughs) Yeah. Right. It took. It took three weeks to actually dig it up, mm-hmm. but it took about 18 months to pull it together. Mm-hmm. Okay. Fucking <laughs> 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 hell, what should we talk about? No, we're fine. Okay, well, yeah. well, when did you first get the idea for this project? What drove you to do this? That's a mental answer, you know. That's mm-hmm. proper mental. I got up. I went. Oh, God, I can't even tell the truth about this, but I suppose I should. Yep. Be it's honest. all about the truth now. It's all, you're right, this is really deadly. I decided that if somebody told the story of my life, mm. right? No, it goes way, way back. In 2005, I did a play called What's in the Cat and it was on at the Royal, at the Royal Court, right? So when it was on, I can't do this. It's proper mad. You can do it. Yeah. yeah. Right, when it was on, I was in the Royal Court, sat in the bar, okay. and they were, there was like a really big posh audience, because that's what the Royal Court audience is like, and a glass of wine was like eight quid, and do you know, and all that, and I didn't have any money, so I couldn't afford a wine, and I couldn't afford a dinner, mm. and stuff like that, and then I looked over at this table, and there was like loads of like posh blonde women, you know, like, and they're guys, and they've got mm. this like wine overflowing on the table, and all that. And I wanted to stab one of them. (laughs) (laughs) And I thought, it would be great, right, if I walked over there and threw over their table. But then in the next thought, I knew that because of my colour, Mm. that they would think nothing of overwhelming me. Do you know what I mean? Like probably chinning me or, do you know, whatever. So that was in 2005 and somewhere it's been in the back of my mind all the time, right? So don't ask me why. In about 2014, that I thought it's some, you know, like your subconscious, like comes forward, yeah. right? So I wanted to, I, I got in touch with the Royal Court and I said, I want to write a play about this and I want to call it Why I Want to Stab a Blonde White Woman in the Royal Court Bar, right? And she thought it was great, Vicky Featherstone, that thing. Yeah. So she said, you know, like, we've got to come up with a concept. That's a great title. I would want to see a play called that. So what's it going to be about? So I didn't know. So over the months, I thought that if I told my life story, mm. right, because I'm, like, working class and fucking half black and this, that, and the other, mm. that my life story would be received. If if I told my life story mm. and a chapter was read by a white actress on the stage, right, that the audience would listen to that, story empathetically do you know what i mean like oh my god it's terrible for her and blah 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 but if then the next chapter a black woman was reading that story they would see it as oh well that's what happens you know in their lives do you know like with my accent and the way that's wearing all that and then so I'm thinking about it. So I went and sold it to the Arts Council, you know, to get the time. So they went, oh, no, that's a great idea. We love it, write up a thing and all that. 
So when I come home that night, a mad sentence come in my head about, and that shows the two halves of you as well, mm. right? But then I thought nobody believed me because nobody believes I'm half white. Yeah. Do you know that if I yeah. can be called black, I can yeah. be called half white. So my mind just tripped out on this thing that, what's she called? Halle Berry received an Oscar yeah. and dedicated it to all the black women when a white mum was clapping her in the crowd. Yeah. And that guy who um, did the Bet Award, she, he did a he did the big like daddy. He what I can't remember what he did. Jesse Williams or something like that. Yeah. He did a big massive speech, you know, like and dedicated it to all the black women. And his white mum's clapping him in the crowd. And then I was just thinking about that all night. And when I woke up in the morning, I thought, I'm going to dig the Reno up. It was just as simple mm -hmm. as that. Yeah. And as luck would have it, because that's the one place where I was half cast and I was totally me. Yeah. Yeah. And as luck would have it, I went downstairs to my crazy neighbour, Sarah. If I'd have gone to anybody else, this wouldn't have happened. Mm. I went down and said, I'm going to dig the rain up. And she went, oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> you know, like, you know, when I'd have gone down and someone would have gone, don't be so fucking stupid. It yeah. would never have happened. So that's kind of the long story. And then weirdly, so I left, I'd come back upstairs, changed my clothes. You know, when you get all yourself looking all fancy. Yeah. Did that. I had a soundtrack in my head, a Reno soundtrack, and went to the Manchester Museum, the City Council, you know, and all the places that, and even though I couldn't have, you know, like you can't have an interview, I told yeah. everybody on the desk, what an interview, what an interview we need to talk to. And I come back armed with that. And on the way back, I met at least 12 people who went to the Reno. I'd not seen people who went to it, and that was just a sign to me. It was meant to happen. That's brilliant. Yeah, so, yeah. So that's, awesome. so that's how I... Okay, so when... That's what you did in the interview, you got something from that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so when you were doing your histories, yeah. part of it, when you were recording them and stuff, way before we got to the point of excavating it, what did you learn? Did you learn any particular way of interviewing people? Was there, like, certain questions you were asking? How, I always... How did they go? I always started with, well, I tried to always start with, tell us about your first day down okay. the Reno, yeah. your first night down the Reno. And then I just let them go whichever way they were going yeah. and tried to, well, I was really interested because yeah. even though I did know these people, I didn't know them like that. Yeah. yeah. But I've had a really kind of interesting revelation since then because I completely sold myself on the whole colour thing. Mm. And now I don't give a fuck about that. <laughs> You know, like having, but I think I had to live it to come yeah. out. You know, the whole kind of end of being bothered about my colour, I think I had to. It's kind of gone beyond that now. It's yeah, it's gone like it. absolutely beyond that. I don't even, when people start talking about colour, it's like, it seems like a ridiculous subject mm -hmm. to me. Yeah. But I wouldn't have thought that without that. And part of why I thought a lot about my colour was being in the arts. Yeah. Do you know, like, and that whole thing about diversity and, yeah. do you know what I mean? You're expected to bring a certain flavour to the table. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's just a kind of another type of colonialism, mm -hmm. you know, that they don't realise they're practising. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't realise it's being practised on me. Yeah. And even when I do, I've kind of flipped the table. I always felt like they was in charge and they was going to give me shit. Okay. Yeah, yeah and now right. I was like, I'm, I'm fucking in charge of myself, yeah. even if I don't get it. Yeah. Do you know, and that began that day when I walked out with my soundtrack. Yeah. In my head, Superfly was playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, in, and it was like, no, I'm changing the rules. Yeah. The rules change now. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And how did you feel when you first approached um, Manchester and Salford? For the archaeology? I must say, even though you're an archaeologist, Kirsty from Salford, they've been wonderful from the word dot. They've been, I couldn't, they sat, Adam sat with me for hours, mm -hmm. an entire week, sometimes eight hour days, to get me to understand what I would need. And because it's all new to me, I couldn't take it in. Yeah. You know, like you need feet for this and this for this and fencing for this. And I have to work out all that pricing for, yeah. you know, the finger. And, you know, they've been, so that was great. And I really, Everybody at Salford allowed me to just be me. Mm -hmm. So, like, because I might get passionate and swear and carry on and get upset. And no, but you completely. And luckily for me as well, at Manchester City Council, I first ever met Sarah Elderkin 
and she's yeah. also been wonderful. So I've been really lucky in that every person that I've met, I've had upset after that because mm. Manchester City Council kept not wanting me to do it. Mm. But the people that I first met were so into it that I just kind of could go back to them each time, you know, and go, can you help me? Yeah. And Adam came like a, after they'd said no for the third time, Adam said, arrange a meeting and I'll come, right? And I hadn't heard from him all week. And I was sat down, you know how he is, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. And I was sat down and thinking, he's not going to come, he's not going to come. And two minutes before the, the meeting that I'd, he'd helped me to arrange, he just walked in like a 72-foot knight in shining <laughs> armour. No, but he really did give yeah. them everything they needed, you know, and put their mind at rest. And I think what was really bothering him he just didn't think I had any backing. Okay, and then, because yeah. he talked about rams and, you know, risk oh. assessments, in, in the language they oh. understand. Yeah. You, like, considering, because they have to react in that really professional way to what they understand what you want to do is do. Yeah. Up. How did some of the the people who went to the Reno, when you told them, how did they react to the mm. fact that you wanted to dig it up? Is there any, anything that sticks out with people? Or did they just jump right on board? They just jumped straight on board. Mm -hmm. He just jumped straight on board. I just still think they thought it was impossible mm -hmm. first, did you know. But you know what's mad is that I've done 20 years in the arts, but if I hadn't have done them 20 years, it wouldn't have been possible because I've got a, a really good success rate. So when I'm saying I want to do this thing, mm -hmm. people do listen to me. I couldn't have walked off the street and, you know, just, yeah, yeah, do you know yeah, what yeah. I mean, and said it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because I've delivered other things mm -hmm. and done big projects and... Mm -hmm. No, the arena has been absolutely on board from... I was really nervous about that, to be honest. Because also I'm coming home with a different label. Mm -hmm. So I've been missing for 20 years. So I think they're just going to think I'm a cunt. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> no, but, you know, and you know, like, mm, where she fucking been and whatever. But, you know, they've been... Especially, I must big up Steve Cottier here. Because he's, when I first... He's the first person I think I rang... And um, I don't even know why. And he brought, there was only 15 of us turned up to the first meeting in mm -hmm. Alec Park Cafe, but it was Steve that brought them. Mm -hmm. And every single time I've needed an interview or needed, I, I know I can count on Steve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how do you think the, the whole project, the project as a whole, from everything from the interviews that you've done to excavating to the stuff that's happened since excavation, how do you think that's impacted kind of the sense of community? Ma massively. Yeah. Absolutely massively. Like when Barry was here today and he, he was doing his evaluation, I know him. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, and, But not just us, like Margaret Wells, who was a volunteer. She's part of the community now. I knew when she was doing her evaluation, we were proper laughing and, do you know, like I know her. And I, go, I went to Carmen's the other day for... You know, like for lunch, I'm not seeing. I couldn't tell you how long. I've, in fact, Carmen's a bit older than me, so I wouldn't have even been in her sphere properly. Mm -hmm. You know, in the arena. But I was there the other day, and we, and we just knew each other. Yeah, it, it's it's just great, actually. It's yeah. that's why the whole thing about colours like out the window, you know, and the whole the separation. Well, it's divide and conquer, isn't it? Really, mm -hmm. the whole world works on that, and it's kind of like, well, we're not divided mm -hmm. now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So from the excavations, from everything that you've you've done, what do you think would you say is the most important thing you've learned about yourself, about Reno, about the people involved? Is there any particular thing that you're like, you know what, I, I, there's no way I would have even sought that or done that without this project? That I'm a horrible person. No, not just me, not just me, that as working class people and as black people and supposedly diverse people and mm -hmm. yourself, John, and all of us, it's just that we're worthless yeah. nobodies and we're horrible people and we should only expect a certain amount of goodness to ever happen to us. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's like I've come to kind of understand that somehow... I've come to believe that, or it was in me somewhere. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Oh, God. <laughs> right. That it was in me somewhere, and now I don't believe it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I absolutely don't fucking believe that, and I don't believe it about any of us. And I'm really excited to go to the Whitworth and now examine that. 
that yeah. we've got a heart as well. Do you know, I don't just have to tell this terrible story about being black or, you know, like a refugee gets off the boat and then the only story he's got is I was on the fucking sea and terrible shit's happened to Mm. me. So now you can milk that and pay your mortgage, Mm -hmm. bottom line, you know, really, and for all of us. And it's like, no, they've got another story as well. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like they've got um, the wife giving birth, do you know, know, like order, they've got everyday ordinary fucking and years and years and years ago, when there was fucking, I was being indoctrinated, which is my own fault to get money out of the Arts Council, who was sending me on different fucking day trips for diverse fuckers, mm-hmm. to where I got brainwashed in the first fucking place, right? <laughs> that, um, or what was I going to say? It's kind of undoing that damage. Yeah. Do you know that? It's because it's like, well, yeah, go that, on. That, um, I think what you bring out in people is that. Um, that that not being afraid of honesty, and even yeah. if it's being honest with yourself, yeah. and what you can do, and, and just I think that you confront that and bring that out in people in, in, a, in a way that I think that's why people would follow you if you wanted to go and read it up again. <laughs> <I've>, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah I was thinking honest. about it today. <laughs> go on, but go on. Like that's what I, I think that that like people respond to truth. We were saying this when we had a, a conversation that, and that seems to be what out of everything what you've brought to the forefront is this mm-hmm. idea of smashing stereotypes, smashing like trauma and pain and dealing with it in a way that it's almost like a healing process people go through through yeah. the arts and through confronting these memories what people have and, and, and all I'm going to keep waffling on now because I've lost my train of thought but I was, I was going to interject yeah. <laughs> you come posh again John yes. go on See, for me like obviously being an archaeologist for a long time and we kind of half, well, we've got one foot in the arts and one foot not in the arts. And it just seems to me that sometimes that they push this idea of diversity and they push the kind of agenda that they have with that so much so that it's actually separating people. And that's not fair. And yeah. What I saw at the Reno was a very large bunch of archaeologists. Oh. You know, yeah. I, I was like, no, it doesn't, it colour like class that doesn't matter because at the end of the day we're all covered in mud oh and it's got that way of kind of unifying everybody which is something that's like the, like it's the best part of community archaeology because it doesn't matter what your background is it doesn't like i was saying before it doesn't matter that those guys who were at collyhurst and the other sites were alcoholics it doesn't matter because once you're in the ground you're an archaeologist oh you're uncovering the past and that's what's important and I think with the arts councils and stuff, sometimes they try to over diversify it, which is more damaging. Yeah. Than just letting people. Yeah, because people. if you if you always bring attention, like attention to people's differences, it just makes it harder to find the similarities, and that's like. Yeah. Damaging in the long run. Hmm. Anywho, sorry. Um, I don't think they did it on purpose because no, the whole so. thing was to bring, you know, to give people a chance, but it's got its own, it's grew its own life, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. So what what did you think was successful about Reno? About the project? Yeah. Um, Everything. I loved everything. I loved the fence being up. I loved us being segregated. You know, like just like having the warmth <laughs> of oh, just God. being together. It killed me yeah. that day when we took it down. Yeah. Like I was, I kept showing up in there. Yeah, and yeah. I, I kept showing up and then the day, the day the fence came down and, the traffic became yeah. really prominent again and it just became that green, that land one, that green was all sludgy and whatnot, but it, like, and that, in, in a very, very small sense, that, that sense of missing community for that period of time afterwards, it's like, that's why I think, again, everyone's come back to the Whitworth and, and what you're doing next is because you brought that spirit back and introduced, not just brought it back, but introduced people into that yeah. spirit and you can feel that. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. That's what I thought was most successful. Yeah. And but also me and Barry was talking about today in his interview, it's that's that was what the Reno was like. Yeah. That feeling if you've got to come back because you don't know what's gonna happen yeah. or not happen and you're missing out. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And and that you know every, I suppose that's all community is, isn't it? I suppose mm-hmm. if you took it back to a cave, you secure I suppose in a cave and that fencing is that you secure there's only so many of you, you know each other, mm-hmm. you know what you're good at and not good at, you know, and 
Yeah, so it takes you back to that. I'm f- just feeling safe. You felt safe. You had a purpose. You felt safe. You, we knew we was going to get fed. Mm-hmm. Someone was going to take care of that. Kirsty and Sarah was going to take care of the archaeology. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Go on, John. I was just thinking that that sense of communal eating is always great. I love that. It was when my favourite. Yeah. yeah. And like that, and people just showing up. Like people waiting. There were some people showing up to the dig at dinner time. Oh, <laughs> defo, <laughs> defo, <laughs> defo, <laughs> like man. Um, yeah. And you were so happy to see him. Yeah. yeah. There were yeah. so many characters on that dig who just show up and they'd be there for a brief moment. Always, I've got to go to the doctors. I've got to go work. Yeah, to go yeah. Home. While they were there, they just brought something. And again, that must have been a, a small reflection of what the arena was like when you're in there with your party, somebody comes down the stairs. Absolutely. Then... Yeah. No, absolutely. It did have a fe- it didn't have a feeling of the arena, mm-hmm. but it did absolutely have a feeling of the arena. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 It so did. In the in the project, what do you think perhaps could have been done better, could have been done differently? Is there any parts of it that you're you weren't happy with? The Pepsi and Coke bottles going yeah. fucking missing for a start. <laughs> that proper hurt, yeah. you know, because they all had different... And there's only about 10 of them left, and there was hundreds. Mm. And the fucking step, Kirsty. The fucking step. What, do you want to just... Do people know what happened to the step? No, like, but they tells. will now, yeah. The step. We got that step. No, it's gone. I know. We had it. It was on site. We had. We had it. We pulled it out. There is one picture of it, but it's definitely yeah. gone. I think it actually got burned in the fire. I wouldn't be shocked, but we pulled that out. I remember being there. We pulled that out together from that that spoil. I know. The step from the stairs. That that would have been the one thing that connected everybody because there was no other way into the Reno. So everybody. Everybody who ever went in the Reno. There's a picture of it though, we have to blow it up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That everybody who ever went in the arena would have stepped on this step. Everybody. And you dug it up and burned it. Uh, dug it up and fucking <laughs> lost it. Yeah. Like I think I got a bit tired towards the end and I wasn't I think, completely on because the bottles went missing towards yeah. the end as well. I think though, if you look at it as a metaphor, the step being burnt. Like, yeah. And then we're talking about rekindling the community. Maybe that's yeah, the phoenix. Oh, yeah, yeah. Instead, yeah. instead of a human sacrifice, yeah. we'll go for the step. Yeah. It's cleaner. Yeah, that that hurt for a few. For a, uh, I couldn't get to sleep. You know, you get them things yeah. like the fucking step. Yeah. Because I just thought it was safe with the other finds, you yeah, know, in, so, yeah. in the. Yeah, in the. Yeah. But if it, wouldn't, if it hadn't been brought in from site, if it was just put to one side. Yeah, it's it just, easy. yeah. Or it could have just been covered over by yeah. accident. But I never seen it again after that moment. Yeah. So I just presumed it was with the fines. No. Yeah, I've got a little bit of the mirror. Yeah. I've got a little bit of the oh. mirror. Um, What could have worked better? I don't know. I can't. What about you, John? For, well, I answered this the other day. I yeah, I'm yeah. Give a totally different answer now. Um, I don't know because I I don't think it's at the stage where we can. I know we talked just about the dig. I think the dig was what it was, and we had to. Well, you and your team and everybody had to react to what was happening presented. at the yeah. time. And I think it reached its conclusion, but I don't think the project. I think the project as a whole. I know it's really cliche to say it's only just beginning, but I think that you've gone back and. And dealt with that, and I'm so excited about where it's going. That I don't think it's time to reflect on that yet. Yeah, Until yeah, but I'm just saying that we're supposed to be evaluating it. Like, what could have been done better? better. Oh, differently. What might you have explored slightly differently? <sighs> I'm, I'm the same as you. Then, in that case, I'm kind of stumped on. I'm stumped we're on it. Of, I, I wish I'd have. I wish the step had not gone missing. Yes, I agree. I wish the fucking bottles had not gone missing. So okay. And then that means what could have gone better is if... With someone that had been that, more... Well, if we, if we were more... if And maybe it was impossible because of the nature of it. Because originally we had you had people who were supposed to be showing up, signed in. Yeah. The archaeologists would have been able to give everyone <laughs> the, like, the equipment yeah. and couple. We had people stomping on in the shops. And, yeah. and people have a pride, don't they? Especially when it comes to labour-like work. But like, oh, I'll, I'll just do it my own way. And maybe if... If the, but it would have been the same experience, but mm. if, if it was a bit stricter on the site access, 
when people are on, when people because it was sometimes when Sarah's waiting around, I was breaking for lunch, guys, <laughs> and Brian's pulling some out, just yeah. like I'm not breaking for lunch. Yeah, you know, true. So, yeah, but that's where the personality came from. That you know, no, exactly. Like, so, so the small for for the energy. Yeah, the small prices to pay. Yeah, you know, for the, yeah for the energy that happened because, like you're saying, that they wouldn't. If it had all been strict and above board and the yeah, right way of doing things, right. no, it wouldn't have had the same, no, it have the same, same kind of energy. Yeah. Why are you laughing? I'm just laughing at the thought of how different it would have been. If, like... Yeah, no, it wasn't right for the site. Yeah. And as, as one of the archaeologists, what you do is you have to make sure it's right for the site. And that's not just the archaeology, that's the people working on the site as well. Yeah. You have to make sure that it's right for the site. That makes sense. Yeah, oh God, no, it's it's good. Good. and that the way that we normally run community things like you were at Polyhurst, so that kind of strip you show up at this time yeah. of sign, you do this, you do that. How many that times? Would work. No, it wouldn't have worked. It wouldn't have been right, and the archaeology wouldn't have got done. Yeah. It wouldn't have happened like that exactly. anyway. How many did times you? did you hear Sarah shouting, Fonzo, get off that? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> or off that yeah, heap. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And he'd stand there like the. Uh, like Joe you know, in that big pose with his top off, yeah, <laughs> dissoluting the sun, brilliant neckerchief on. Yeah, <laughs> what a cool. Like, no, yeah, no hat, no, no PP, just a pair of boots and a bandana. Everybody's been laughing about you know, like how he didn't do a stitch away. In fact, he looked affronted if you'd asked him to do something. There is some of him like going through all the finding all the milk bottles. He must, I and I think it's a uh, barrier or something. I'm just glad to see you do some work. <laughs> There's all kinds of I stuff. Remember the, the he day was there every day. The, party, the day after the party on Saturday, yeah. it was about 6 a.m. Mm. I think you'd just gone. Right. It's been about half six or something. Oh, in the morning. So left his keys. So we were inside getting <laughs> the cabins locked up. He climbed up and jumped over the Harris fencing, ran to the marquee, picked up his keys, ran back again and jumped back over the Harris fencing. By which time I'd walked over and just opened it. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was just open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, he's con constantly dramatic. Yeah. Yeah. You could have just opened it, but no. <laughs> no, no, that wasn't dramatic enough, Kirsty. <laughs> that wasn't fun, Oh. <laughs> the night in the tent was good as well, oh, wasn't it? Brilliant. You know, that is, honestly, that is the first time. I have ever seen anything like that happen with archaeology. That kind of event feel to it, that big kind of marquee event feel. Aww. We generally, it, it doesn't happen. We have open days, it's all very yeah. pleasant, it's all very nice and there's cake. But <laughs> there's, <laughs> oh, there was cake. Yeah, yeah. there was cake. <laughs> but with this, to have that type of open day from our perspective, it would have been insulting. To the people who did it, to the, the archaeology itself. Oh, there was no open day, though, very, yeah, but it was no. just pissing it down. But yeah. To have that kind of very tea and biscuits, approach, yeah. I think would have just been a little bit insulting. To well, the but the thing is, that so the way you did it, people perfect. showing up. Oh, was thank you. Perfect. People showing oh. up to that was amazing. That but was, yeah. That moment wasn't there, are people? And you, that. I don't know how what you were concentrating on at the end of that dig because <laughs> we're trying to you're trying to make it safe so people can go and look at the site. Yeah. Somebody's putting the lights up, but then it wasn't the right kind of lights. And yeah. You're dealing with that, you need to go home and have a bath. Oh yeah. And you still people are coming for tickets and you're selling them out your bra. You know, <laughs> you know, yeah. And you shout at it like Fonto's trying to do a blessing. And you're saying, "No, you're not doing it." <laughs> and, and it was just. Oh, yeah. But then to see that once it once it went dark and the rain kind of let up, again, yeah, and people still showed up in the high heels. Oh I know, I know, it was great. Fuck it, I've got to say, people were sitting, you know, like bring your own drink. People had suitcases <laughs> of drink, and then not just one or two people had suitcases yeah. of drink. I remember when we went to get some food, there was a guy parked up on the street. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Several of them. I'll tell shots. you what though. I'll tell you what though. I did ask him. You can't sell it on site, you know, because yeah. we've not got the license, and yeah. they really were good about it. Were, no, you know good. that's fine. You know, like you can sell like outside yeah. all you like. You know, it was great. About it was yeah. a great night. That actually wasn't it. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone was very well behaved. Nobody went in the trench, so that was good. I did. <laughs> yeah. I did. Yeah. yeah. 
because uh, <laughs> we went obviously you I think you said you guys go now because we nobody wanted to see, obviously got to the point stop filming Harry was dead on his feet oh. he had to come get back on our couch for a bit Harry and then yeah. on the way back the whole way back Harry's like they're not going to be there no one's going to be there and we got back and people were still posting <laughs> <out of ten. laughs> It'd been the open day, you guys have been like filming and stuff during the day. So we left at about half two, three o'clock, go home, get a little bit of kit. Yeah. We came back to site for half six. So we had about three hours, came back, and Harry, no, 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 they'll be gone, they'll be gone, they'll be gone. I was like, you don't know Mancunia. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Know yeah. They're yeah. They're going to be gone, they're yeah. going to be there. And as we turned the corner to park up, there was still just so many people there. And I was like, I told you. <laughs> yeah. In fact, we should have done what Susie Prowse said. He's like, just gone and got a boombox and oh, carried yeah, on. Because yeah, it was yeah. the reason it ended was because he took the music, yeah. you know, the system. Yeah. But I'd have been up for staying there. Yeah. My favorite, one of my favourite images as well. Um, oh, my God. It, I'm, mine's gone bloody blank. Go on. Oh, where it was, yeah, it was so... All these people are pouring out and then... You imagine all the noise, and you can remember the night before, and then Persian came out just carrying his two carry bags. Yeah, <laughs> like, from the tent, just Stoic. came out. Just at seventy four. Yeah. yeah, I know. At seventy four, just stoic. And he had it rocking. Everybody had it rocking, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. So was, that was it. That was all four. Was that all four? Quick. Anything else that you need to add at this point? I don't think so. I don't. Oh, just that loads of great, amazing things have happened afterwards, like the Whitworth and mm-hmm. like the Manchester, whatever festival, Isn't history it? festival. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You yeah. went to the House of Commons. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Fuck off. That's just ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> I don't want to go really, yeah. but I won't get votes, will I? Because if all them six get go and get it goes yeah. on social media and. Yeah. Is it's it just, just you going solo for that, or are you taking... Depends, I don't know. Whoever wants to come can come. Oh, I don't know. I don't care what happens there. Just take everybody. Yeah, no, that'd be fun. That'd be fun. Just a bus, hire a bus. Yeah. Get everyone down there. That world doesn't exist to me anymore. No. And that was kind of like what the... Re- it doesn't... None of it exists. It's just ridiculousness. Yeah. And circumstance. Yeah, and all you know, all the shit we're supposed to believe about ourselves, and I can't wait to go to the Whitworth and do more, you know, arty shit, and have everybody there and do great stuff with our and yeah. see what we can do. Yeah. And they love us. They, it's going to be great. They absolutely love us. I haven't got anything more to say. I think there's there's a certain realness that you bring to projects, a certain kind of realness that most people that I've met from the art world don't have and it's those realizations that you've had over the years that actually it doesn't fucking matter yeah because we're all artists we're all people absolutely we're all one large community and I think that's not only just so massively refreshing to see but it's also something that's the only way that stuff like this can develop and the only way that proper art can develop is by being that honest and being that real mm. so Thank I think that's how it becomes inspiring. We can't tell Kirsty's have like five sugars in the brew now. <laughs> keep on going and going. Oh, no, no. I oh, think... No. no, because that's the whole point in art, isn't yeah, it, really? Exactly. Is that you can tell someone the truth. Yeah, that's exactly. the... Do you know what I mean? That's the whole point. And this is... I think we were talking... We're, we're, we're these... Um, the Reno Reno heads, the Reno 12, whatever. It is yeah, the Reno 12. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what they're going to create, they're going to pick their own piece of artwork and what you help them manifest, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be, like, I have no doubt in my mind that it's going to be amazing because you're helping them bring something else that they would never have done otherwise. Yeah, but I'm not just being patronising. They're helping me, though. I must be fucking honest. To get back and be real. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? That's proper grounded, mate, and it's grounding. I think that's, like, I'm... Don't well. I'm feeling that myself more mm. more so than ever. Like, I, and I think that being part of this project has made me confront some things about myself, mm. and that's that's why I'm ready for this next stage to just go for it and and fuck off to ponsiness. Exactly. Last word. <laughs> <laughs> the ponsiness. <laughs>